Hello there. In this video, I'm going to discuss the differences between a Zoom meeting and a Zoom webinar. Recently, I had a client who said she wanted a webinar. I set it up as webinar. And then she, once she figured out what a webinar actually is, she was kind of uh, disappointed that she couldn't interact with the audience members. So that's why I wanted to um, give you this information so that you can uh, set up your event the right way the first time around because it's it's difficult to uh, change to uh, a different format once you've already set up your event. So with a meeting, <clears throat> It's very interactive. All of the all of the participants in a meeting can chat in the chat box. They can go on camera. They can unmute themselves. They can share their screen. They can share their whiteboard. It's very interactive. It's like a collaborative event. It's conducive to a more intimate setting with a smaller group of people that you trust to not be spamming people or doing or saying inappropriate things. So a webinar is more controlled. You have control over how much people can interact with each other. In a webinar, you have panelists and attendees. The panelists are the host, the co-hosts, the speakers. And if you do an event with a tiered structure, like if you have a free event where people can pay to become a VIP, if uh, somebody's a VIP, then they get upgraded to panelist and then they can be seen and heard and interact with the speakers. I've had, I've had some events uh, run like that. You can unmute the attendees, but they can't unmute themselves. In fact, you can't even see the attendees. You can see the number of people in the room, but that's about it. So this is more like a go-to webinar style. It's a presentation where the speaker or speakers give their information, but there's not a lot of interaction from from the audience members. So you can change your webinar to a to a meeting format when it goes live. But you can't do it beforehand and if you have a recurring event like if you have like a 3-day event then you're going to have issues with people being able to access the event when you switch it over to a meeting. So the other way around, that doesn't work at all. You can't you can't go from a meeting to a webinar once it's already set up. And once you start sending out um, the link for the event. So make sure you know which format you wanna use before you set up your event. And don't, I would say just don't try to change it over once once you set it up and once you start sharing it with people because it's just going to make things a lot more complicated. So um, another difference between the two is that the webinar is only available if you have a paid account. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the plans and pricing to compare these plans with you. So in the basic account, you have up to 40 minutes per meeting. You can have up to 100 people. You have access to whiteboard, chat, uh, mail and calendar. With the next step up, which is pro, it's 150 a year. You, you can have up to 30 hours per meeting. You can, you're still limited to 100 attendees, unfortunately. Um, you have access to all these things. You actually have access to cloud storage, so you can record your events on the cloud. And you have access to um, other apps as well. 
So it goes up from here. If you do the uh, business, it's one ninety nine a year. You get up to three hundred attendees. It's still only five gigabytes of cloud storage. And then there's other goodies down here. And then you have the business plan, the next one up, or business plus, I should say, for 250 a year. You get up to 10 gigabytes of storage. And then you have workspace reservation, translated captions, phone, yada, yada. Okay. Then you have the enterprise over here. And over here, <laughs> you can get up to 1,000 attendees per event. You get unlimited cloud storage. And it would appear that this is where you actually get the webinars as well. So with the Zoom meetings, you have obviously here, so with the Zoom meetings, you have between 100 to 1,000 attendees. And then with a webinar, you, have, you can get between 500 up to 50,000 attendees. So that's the other difference between the two. So now I want to take you to another aspect of this. And I think this is where some confusion comes in because I think that people assume that with the webinar, you have it a registration page and uh, people get email notifications and whatnot. So you can actually make a registration page required for a meeting or a webinar. I think that the main difference between the two is with the webinar, people will automatically get reminders from Zoom about the event. Whereas with a meeting, you have to do it manually. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So with, um, let's go to webinars. And I'm going to schedule a webinar. And here, is where you will want to check this box that says registration required. And now people have to enter in their name and their email address in order to get access to the um, event link, okay? And you can do this on either a meeting or a webinar. And <clears throat> what I like to do is once I set something up, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to schedule this event. And now, so here, here's all the, here's all the uh, different things that you can have as kind of additional things that you can use like polls, quizzes, surveys, Captions, branding, email settings. So this is where you get um, the additional email reminders. You can set these up so that if you go into here, so you can say one week, one day, and one hour before the event. So you can save that. And now people will get extra reminders in their email that this is going on. Now, this is the part that you do not have access to when you set up a meeting. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out here. Let me use this one because this is set up with a registration page. And if you go into email settings, they get a confirmation email when they register and that's it. See that? So that's the, that's the notification that they get. Let's cancel out of this, but they don't get the, the one week, one hour, one day notifications 
here. You don't get that option. But what I, what I like to do is I like to go into the registrations. And so you click on registrations view, and then you can click on that. And then you can say, actually, I'm going to do that so she doesn't get that. <laughs> then you can say resend confirmation email. So this is my, my little trick to make sure that they do get the additional reminders in their email prior to the event starting. So I might send this out a day before, an hour before, and when it goes live. So that's what I like to do to kind of give that extra little push to make sure that people are remembered to show up and that'll increase your attendance rate. So then you can just click resend confirmation email and that will resend that same email out to those people. What you can do is you can have an ongoing event so that if people register once, they'll get um, reminders every single time when you go live. To upgrade to the paid account, you can also uh, brand your event. So I like to add like extra little things like this, you know, have like a cover image, you can add a description. You can upload your logo. I hope this was helpful. And I hope you are able to make an informed decision next time you hold a Zoom event. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.